Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Julie and today you are joining me in a super fun video. It is called 21 Design Rules That I Swear By. I have been designing for clients for almost 17 years now, 12 years of which I've owned my own business and I have learned a thing or two about design rules. These are rules that I formulated on my own in my decades of designing four and five star hotel resorts, casinos, restaurants, bars, nightclubs. I am currently a custom home interior designer and I'm a certified interior designer as well. So you'll know throughout all of these years, all of these decades that I have a few tricks up my sleeve. If you're looking for a really quick interior design guide to reference, this video is for you. This first section is on space planning. Measure, measure, measure. Shop with a tape measure and make sure you measure your entire floor plan, length, width, height of walls, and of course all of the existing furniture that you're planning to purchase new furniture around. It's a really good rule of thumb to sketch these out beforehand and either leave it in the notes section of your phone or at least have a digital copy of all of the measurements to keep online somewhere. You will always reference these measurements when you're out shopping for the perfect size furniture. On area rug sizing. When in doubt, go all out. Rugs should fit all the furniture above it, not within it. This essentially means that if you have a living room with a sofa, some lounge chairs, and a coffee table, the front ends of the sofa, the lounge chair, and the entire coffee table should fit squarely on top of the rug. Ideally, you should have all of the furniture legs fit on top of it, but I would say the front legs are the minimum exception. Remember that the smaller the rug, the smaller the room will appear. If you don't have a budget for a rug that large in size to fit squarely underneath all of your furniture, consider doing without it. Area rugs help to anchor a seating group and help to create really soft textures and dimensions to a room. Just think about ways where you can visually expand the size of the room. A smaller area rug will cut the whole room off, whereas no area rug would be a better alternative if you can't afford the largest one possible. Furniture should never be pushed all up against the walls. Float your furniture in the room to create smaller conversation areas. I know what you're thinking, my living room is already too small, I have to push the main sofa up against the walls. A little designer's trick is to give the sofa or the seating group a little bit of breathing room. Two or three inches is going to make a really huge difference away from the walls. It'll allow your living room space to breathe and trust me, it's going to make such a huge difference when you're in the conversation area. What about the bedroom? If you have a small bedroom, should you push the bed all the way up against the wall? Same idea here. Even if it's two or three inches away from the wall, it's just enough for you to make the bed and it'll make the room feel a lot cozier, a lot airier, and it'll give your space some room to breathe. In an open concept layout, large spaces need functional zones. What does that mean? It means that you're essentially breaking up a large open concept layout into smaller little groups. Maybe it's one for dining, maybe it's one for lounging and watching the TV, and perhaps even a little separate area for playing games or doing homework. The more you break it up into functional zones, the more cohesive the space will feel. On the flip side, if you have a small space, it's not about creating zones. Clearly, you probably only have one major seating group. In this case, it's all about appropriately scaled furniture. That simply means your furniture is scaled proportionately in relation to the size of the room. If you want more tips and illustrations on these points, definitely check out my Awkward Space series. The Open Concept Layouts video will help you immensely. 
Also in the How to Create Your Dream Space series, I give you a step-by-step -step guide on how I design an entire plan for clients. It's broken down into nine super detailed episodes, the first of which is how to determine function and measure your space for the appropriately scaled furniture. I teach you how to measure your rooms. I show you how to select furniture that is scaled proportionally for the space. I mean, it is really an interior design 101 and two of my favorite series that I've ever created on the channel. Here are the design rules that I swear by for paint colors. If you want the room to appear larger, paint it a dark color. Dark walls recede, therefore adding depth to a space. That doesn't mean that you paint one accent wall a dark color. It literally means paint all four walls that same dark color in order to make the space appear larger. Always paint your ceiling color a tinted shade of your wall color. The only exception to that rule is if you have white walls, then the white ceiling is okay. But if you have colored walls, look to your paint deck. On a paint deck, that would literally equate to the lightest color on that deck. Usually you have a deck and there's maybe five or six different colors. You're looking for the lightest color, the top chip on that deck to paint your ceiling. That will create an overall cohesive feel to the room where there's a dialogue between your wall color and your ceiling color. How to choose the right sheen. The more high traffic the area is, the higher the sheen should be. The lower the traffic, the more flat and matte the sheen can be. Bathrooms and kitchens need a semi-gloss for ease of wiping down dirt and water. Bedrooms can be matte since less people use the space. Moving on to kitchen design rules. When to use knobs versus handles. Using knobs for the cabinets and handles for the drawers will get it right every single time. On countertops. Quartz is almost indestructible and affordable, but marble is the luxury choice. Never choose granite unless it's exotic because granite is really contractor builder grade basic and you are better than basic, my friends. What to choose first, the countertop or the backsplash? Well, that really depends on you. I typically shop with clients and I let them look at all of the finishes in the kitchen. If they have an affinity towards a really beautiful artisan tile for the backsplash, we start with the backsplash and we choose a coordinating slab for the countertops. On the flip side, if you found a slab that you're absolutely in love with, choose the countertop first and think about running that slab up the backsplash for a seamless effect. Remember that the more patterned one finish is, the more simplified the other should be. This next section is all about feng shui design rules that are super basic and easy to follow. Mirrors in the bedroom are an absolute no-no. You'll know from my feng shui for bedrooms video, avoid these taboos. Mirrors in the bedroom, especially when they're reflecting the bed, is just too much yang active energy in a place of yin, restful, peaceful sleep. It is also a common superstition that if you're in the relationship and their mirror reflects the bed, it's almost as if someone is committing adultery, like someone else is sleeping in the bed with you. So mirrors in the bedroom, absolute no-no. The only exception is if you have a flanked above the nightstands that are on the side of your bed, not reflecting the bed. For kitchen designs, if you are renovating the kitchen or it's a brand new build, never place the stove and the sink directly across from each other. The stove equals fire, sink equals water, and fire and water cancel each other out, therefore hindering the good positive chi that's going to come into the space.
If you have this current condition in your home, definitely check out my video on feng shui cures for common home issues, where I share tips and illustrations on how you can combat this common home issue. Plants in the living room allow good energy to flow. Keep them watered and thriving to maintain great energy. On the flip side, if your plants are dying, your luck will too. In the bedroom. If you must place your bed directly beneath a window, make sure you add heavy drapery to the window that you'll close at night. You need your head to be protected at all times, especially when you're sleeping. Windows allow the energy and the chi to bum rush you, and all that active energy is not good for you while you're at rest. Desks should never face walls. You want to have a line of sight to the entry door so guests don't surprise you. If you absolutely have to face the walls, make sure that you face the wall that shares the entry door so you can still see who's coming in and out. On mastering the mix. Mix and match hardware finishes for a designer custom look. My favorite combinations are polished nickel and matte black iron, matte brass and antique black, stainless steel and silver chrome. A mix of raw and refined always looks high end. I have a really fun video on the channel called How to Mix Metals if you're still a little bit apprehensive about how to mix metal finishes, whether or not they're on your faucets, your hardware, your lighting fixtures. It's a really great video that will break down all of my design rule basics and go into further detail. Never match nightstands and dressers. Matchy matchy is just a huge no-no for me because you only have one opportunity to make a statement in a space and matching sets are just not it. It often feels very one-dimensional and very one-note. This is your opportunity to show more of your style, so get creative. While we're talking about matchy-matchy, let's move on to the dining room. Never purchase a matching dining set and dining chairs. Think about mixing and matching textures. If you have a wood table, think about soft and upholstered dining chairs. If you have a stone table, why not try wood chairs? Mixing and matching in your home is really what's going to make it come alive and feel so multidimensional. Whether you have an open concept layout or a home with many different rooms, lighting in a space is like jewelry to your outfit. It's a perfect finishing touch, so accessorize accordingly. The right fixture can make or break a room. Do you want to make a statement or are you looking to blend right in? I have two really awesome lighting videos on the channel now. One is all about measuring each room and how to pick the perfect size pendant or chandelier or wall sconce in relation to the room that you're trying to design. And in the other lighting video, I source 100 fixtures all under $500. So definitely check those two videos out if you're undertaking any lighting makeovers in your home. On storage and organization. Maximize all of your walls for vertical storage. That means taking advantage of the full height of your walls and vertically installing storage and organization solutions to support you. Use hooks whenever possible to clear clutter off the floors. For bookshelf styling, always use personalized objects such as souvenirs and hobbies, as well as books and magazines interspersed to tell your story. Think of a cohesive color palette with three or four different colors and use those colors throughout your bookshelf. This will keep the vignettes looking cohesive, styled, personalized, and not overly cluttered. I'd like to leave this video by sharing my ultimate design mantra with you. Interior design is to share your story, who you are, where you've been, and where you hope to go. Make your selections based on aspiration and then inspiration. Copying a room you found on Pinterest does not make it your own. Trust me, I am on Pinterest day and night. I scour and source and then I look for inspiration. 
you can change the finishes, the color, the materials, just find some way to make it yours. Focus on how you aspire to live and use that vibe to inspire your own personal design. It's kind of like dressing for the job you want, not the job you have. I always say to design for the life that you want, not just designing for the life that you currently have. Most of my clients don't really know what they want. Maybe they're downsizing, maybe they're upgrading to a larger home. It's my job to capture the essence of their lifestyle and personality, paint a picture of their current aspirations, but elevate it in a way that allows them to function efficiently and in the most stylish way possible. There are so many decisions to make, so many options to choose from. I get it, interior design can be so, so overwhelming. But the next time you're out shopping, just ask yourself, is this the best I could do? I used to go shopping with my husband and I asked for his opinion all the time, especially when it came to furniture and decor. And sometimes his replies would be, oh my gosh, yes, that's amazing, that's it. And then sometimes his reply would be, you could do better. And that really stuck with me and that really resonated with me. So every time I'm out shopping for myself or my clients, I always sit back, take a look at the big picture and ask myself, can I do better? Always be willing to do more and I promise you, your home will reward you back in return. That's it for today's video. I hope you love this content and my 21 design rules that I absolutely swear by. If you like this type of content and you want more basic principles just like this, please give this video a thumbs up. Comment below and let me know if you have any questions when it comes to any of these design rules or if you want me to elaborate with a full deep dive detailed video into any one of these basics. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click that little notification bell to be notified of new videos that we drop every single Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next week.